Okay, I'll start with a simple and fairly short warm up. So we'll go into some arm swings. And uh, even before you start, you want to have a, a good connection with the ground. Become mindful of your feet, fully connecting to the ground, the entire bottom of the feet nicely connected. And that's, that's your source, not your upper body. And the ultimate source isn't even the legs or hips. It's a connection with the ground. So just bringing your mind to that place, being aware of the feet opening up into the ground. And then use the ground to shift your weight and turn your hips. Be also being conscious of your body structure being open and spacious. And again, letting your weight enter into the ground. Push off one leg, descend the weight the other way. Push down the other leg, descend the hips going the other way. So you press so we don't throw ourselves. Very upper body oriented. It's literally from the ground up, quite literally. Press down one leg that turns the hips and sends the weight. Press down into the ground that turns the hip and shifts the weight. So another time we get into more detail, but that's accessing the ground force, it's called the ground force, and developing the ground path. So we access the ground force, not our upper body, and we develop a very clear ground path through our body. Then we just let our arms go. So again, these aren't arm swings, we're using your arms to swing. It's actually groundwork. Alignment, grounded, and if we're grounded and we're aligned, then we can afford to release the abdomen and release all the other muscles. Once you have a lot of those things going, being conscious of your tensions, whatever levels of tensions you can be aware of, and a continual process of releasing more and more of those tensions. All the while going back to those, that checklist again, am I accessing the ground? Am I nice and vertical, hanging out? All those things we have to continually review and recycle in our awareness and continuing to ask ourselves, can I release a bit more? Again, release the abdomen. Hanging the tailbone is very important for everything we do. And then the tailbone, another way of putting that is went the lower back virtually flat. If we don't take care to do that, if I can try to exaggerate and stand up as most of us do, and then accentuate the curve here, that of course is a lot of tension in the, the muscles along the lower back. Those muscles are shortened. But that's not the only issue with that. Being tight here, first of all, it's very easy to strain the lower or back and hips when you do any movement. And it's, it literally turns you into a plank and in fact separates your upper and lower body. So again, very easy to strain yourself. It's not gonna be a whole body uh, experience at all. So by flattening the lower back or pointing the tailbone to the ground, not tilting forward, because that's the same problem but going the other way. But if you can virtually flatten that lower back, that takes all the stress out of the lower back. And it's a very quick way to unify your body, upper and lower body become unified when you flatten that lower back. So you want to work with that in everything we do. And then again, once you checklist a few of those things, see how much you can just release and let go. Breathe into the abdomen. So it's a real dance between doing and not doing, yang and yin. Doing very intentional, a lot of very intentional things that we're doing, and also releasing, letting go, and non-doing. So it's a real dance between those two things. A lot of things to be mindful of, work on, and also how much can you release, let go, and not do anything extra. It's a whole nother mindful path in itself, doing nothing extra. For example, tune into your shoulders right now. Is there a little bit of 
arm or shoulder stuff that you're doing the arm swing with. Or maybe you're not using your arms to do the arm swing at all, but there's some muscular tensions that, that's holding back those arms from being totally free and released. So either muscle exertion in terms of doing the arm swing or muscular tension and holding back in some way. So being conscious of how much more can I let go or how much less can I do? Non-doing. And slowly winding down. Staying in a light horse stance. So swaying the swing. Again, how much can I take out of the shoulders? Accessing natural forces, gravity and momentum in this case. By the way, how's the level of volume? Can you hear my voice fairly well? Yeah, it's coming through clear for me. Okay. Okay, good. And again, doing something fairly simple here. We can checklist a lot of these things. Am I standing up and up tight? Or am I hanging out? The spine is long and dangling. So flattening the lower back. Asking myself, can I release those shoulders more and more? And then with a little bit of up and down, using the legs just a little bit. Again, can you get those arms moving, not from the arms, but just from this body movement, and your intention. So that, that's a matter of degree, a matter of level. So we can all release more, but I wanna to try to get away from this kind of thing. That's my arms. You're just doing this, whole body movement, and captivating gravity momentum generated by this whole body movement. The only reason why the arms can go in a circle is because of your intention. Nothing else. and then the other way as well. And then just letting the arms hang, gradually come to stillness. So that's a big part of the process is the ending part. Just surrendering to gravity and experiencing that process. Now we'll take a forward stance and we'll swing the arms in a circle. Again, using your hip turn, not your shoulder. So it's okay if the arm doesn't make a huge circle, it's more important that you're not using your arm. So whatever part we're moving, we don't wanna move it from that part. So hip turns forward, forward, forward to drive that movement. Still hanging out from the string, weight through the feet, breath in the belly. And then choose, decide to let gravity take over through your arm and experience that process very naturally, gradually arm is taken to vertical stillness by gravity. So that's a huge part of the process we want to connect to. And then the other stance, we're going to turn the hip forward that drives the arm. How much can you release out of the shoulder? Using the ground, using the legs, using the hips. Nothing in the shoulder. Hang out and breathe. Give it over to gravity. Enjoy the process of naturally swinging to stillness. Very natural process of non-doing. So that's a really good experience of non-doing. Not doing anything extra. Go back to the other side. 
and we'll just do the circle the other way. Now, previously, the arm was swung forward by the hip turning forward. Now we're going to hit the turn back. It turns back, back, back to send the arm the other way. First hang out, connect to the ground. Turn the hip back. And the arm is just in orbit from your hip turn. Release the belly, release the shoulder, just a turning of the hip. Less and less in the arm. And choosing to let gravity take over and experience that process while you stay nice and upright, nice and open. Breathe. And once more, switch. So again, we're going to shift the weight back, turn the hip back, and that initiates the swing back. Don't bring the arm around and down. Let that happen under its own timing. So again, not non doing, not doing anything extra. How much can you release? And choosing to give it over to gravity. Nice and open and pristine with your posture, completely released through the body and arm. Feel the vibration, the residue of vibration and vibrancy. Gentle stretch. Knees are bent. Lower back is flat. Energize both arms. Be equally aware of both arms. Good. Stretch back, gentle, very gentle. Equal stretch, equal awareness through both arms. Not holding your breath at all. Okay, and just a little bit more stretching. Send the hips forward from the back heel. Again, this is coming from the ground. Back stretch, but let's get a little bit more detail with this. Again, still sourcing the ground force. It's not the upper body doing a stretch. From the back heel, through the leg, through the hips, out through the arms, make the largest possible arc, largest possible arc, all the way forward and up. Keep pushing from the back heel, as far as comfortable, and allow the body to open. If you get to a point where you're tightening and tensing up, you're going a little bit too far for yourself right now. You want to consciously Stay open. In fact, keep opening into that stretch. Come forward by pushing the back heel. Other side. So again, from the back heel, through the hips, through the arms, largest possible arc. And intend your body to open in the midst of the stretch rather than tighten. Energize your little fingers. And the tegatana, the hand blade. The light horse dance. Do some Aiki exercises to open up the joints, open up the body, stretch the fascia. So this is a light, light horse dance. Toes lightly up to the corners. And therefore, the knee slightly out. Again, lower back is flat. Shoulders are down, elbows are forward. So, just a light bend in the knees. You want to be able to stay here for a while. We want to open up the body structure. 
Become conscious of lengthening the spine, stretching the spine up and stretching the spine down. So the crown of the head floats up, tailbone hangs straight down, opening up the spine vertically. And then from that stretch vertically, open up the shoulder joints. So opening up your spine, opens up your shoulder joints and extends your arms forward. See if you can find that connection where the lengthening of your spine sends the arms out, it lengthens the arms, especially from the shoulder. Release the abdomen and breathe into the abdomen. So we're hanging out, weight through the feet, opening up the body, opening up the spine, opening up the shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers. So again, this is stretching the fascia, opening up the joints. And come out of that for a moment. It's good to have lots of little breaks with this kind of work because it's very intensive in terms of your concentration and intention. And if you're not used to this, it's demanding a lot of minuscule control in your body to stretch the fascia and not focusing on the muscle. So the fascia is that web work throughout your body. It's that white tissue. The white tissue throughout the body, it's, it's the uh, liquid webbing that encases all the tissues in the body. So one of the interesting things about fascia is a superconductor for key, the chi. Muscles are very much an insulator for internal energy, chi or ki. It gobbles up all the ki. And so we lose our energy very quickly. And it doesn't transmit our power and energy. Where the fascia, it's much more refined tissue, much more refined tissue. It's a superconductor, super highway for the key or the chi. So energetically, we want to start to access something less crude than the physical muscles. And even our actual physical movement, we want to eventually come more and more from away from the crude muscles to something that's more refined, and has more tensile strength. So muscles are kind of like crude building blocks. They can be fairly strong, but they're easy to break down and they have a lot of limits, physical building blocks. Compare that to something that has a lot of tensile strength, like a spider web. Spider web is stronger than anything that we made, man-made, ounce per ounce. So we're moving from something that's very blocky and crude, like blocks, or muscles, to something like a spider web that's extremely strong and has tensile strength, strength that exists along length. Muscles do not have that. So let's go back into that. Hang out, drop the tailbone. And as you send the elbows forward, rolling the elbows forward draws the shoulders down even more. You might want to try that a few times. If you roll the elbows forward, it kind of sucks down the shoulders. Helps really bring the shoulders down and connect the shoulders to the rest of the body. So with this vertical stretch through the spine, and then connect that outward to the arms. Remind yourself to release the abdomen. Push the chin back, maybe down slightly and back to open up the neck. Just like we want the lower back virtually flat and long, we want the back of the neck flat and long. Most people are like, most people are like this, tightened, restricted, and same thing up here especially in our modern society, the desk and the car. So we need to open this stuff up again. So this becomes open and long. This becomes open and long. Physically, how you can do that very quickly is simply push the chin back, keeping it flat, not up, but straight back. That's a very physical, kind of a crude way, but it's, it's, it's a good start. Physically opening up the back of the neck, elongating the back of the neck, and pushing the chin in, pushing the lower back out, and extend that out through the arms. See if you can connect that through the extension through the arms. Hang out and breathe, weight through the feet. Okay. A 
We're going to again work from the fascia. Again, just use your imagination if this is new for you. Fake it till you make it. Stretch your entire torso, not focusing on the muscles, not thinking about the muscles, just stretching your torso and up through your arms, stretching out through your arms until that opposite foot is pulled off the ground. So see, just do the best you can to open up and stretch your entire body crosswise, diagonally across your body, stretching out until it picks up your back foot for just a moment. And you just try to access that by opening and stretching your body rather than picking up your leg, opening and stretching through your entire body. Bring that foot up. Breathe. Let's try a few on the other side. Shoulders down, but stretching out and up. See if you can get a stretch through your entire body until that foot is picked up, just for a moment. So again, this is a process of developing the Aiki body, a body that's open and spacious, yet very structured and very connected. And try a couple more over here. Stretching through the body. So more and more, what you're developing is a different kind of body, what we could call the Aiki body. Very, very different than a normal person's body. It's developing a body that's open, spacious, connected organically. Accessing the white tissue, not the red tissue. Okay. Now, adding a bit more to this, you might want to watch the first one or two. I do the same stretch, and it picks up that foot for a longer period of time. You stretch, 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 open up the shoulder, stretch, stretch, stretch until I'm, I've lifted that foot off the ground. Then this one hand, it's palm up, the hand that's closer to you, rotates vertically up vertically up and then out a little bit to the corner. Then you can come back down to your stance. Then we'll swing over to the other side. Stretch, 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 stretch until your foot is picked up. And the palm is upward, one closer to your body. Rotate it away from your body, but straight up vertically, straight up vertically. And we're attempting to stretch through the entire body, both sides of the body. Stretching through both sides, lengthwise and widthwise. Stretch, 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 until the foot is pulled off. The leg is pulled up. This hand here rotates vertically up and then out to the corner. Stretching through both sides of the body. So this is not a balance exercise. The opening is stretching. And then back to the stance. Stretch, 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 stretch. Vertical stretch up. Stretch through both arms, both sides of the body, and straight up through your spine. A couple more. Everything stays open, especially the shoulder joints. Breathe. Open, stretch. Breathe. One more. Stretch, stretch. You're not picking up the leg, it's stretched up, it's pulled up. Vertical spiral up, stretch through the spine, stretch through the entire body, through your fascia system. Now, arms in front, cross your wrists and stretch the back. Open the shoulder joints. And then the arms come down in front of you out to the corners, stretching through the sternum and chest. This is called the yoke. Stretching, opening up the chest through the arms. 
cross in front, stretching the back, opening up the shoulders, stretching through the arms to stretch the chest. Breathe, breathe. Once more, stretch in front, out through the fingers, open up the back, rotate the shoulders, open the shoulder joints, breathe, out down through the arms, through the chest, across your body. Now, take a stance, a homino kamai. I'm gonna turn sideways just so that you can see. You can do the same thing in a ready stance, homino kamai, ready stance. So, the spine is long, stretch the spine long, open the back of the neck, hang the tailbone, so we want the lower back flat. We want the neck, back of the neck, open and long. Open the shoulders, extend out through your fingers. So that we're doing the same sort of stretching opening, just in a traditional stance. Now, when you breathe in, switch your stance. When you breathe out, extend and open. Breathe in, switch. Breathe out, extend and open. Go at your own time. Breathing in is switching. Breathing out is opening and extending. On your own time. Very intentful, very mindful. Breathing in is switching. Breathing out is sinking, settling, and opening. Breathing in is switching. Breathing out is sinking, opening, stretching. So on your own, on your own time. So you're very mindful, very intentful, using your breath and your intention to open and extend. Try a few more. Good. Any comments or questions with what we've done so far? Okay. Okay, now, as best we can, we'll keep that shape, keep that feeling. Try to notice when you lose it. Losing it basically means we're tightening in or up. We're curtailing our shape and our energy flow. So as best we, we can, we want to memorize, remember that feeling. Have the body remember that feeling. That feeling that we just went through with several exercises of opening up the body, stretching the fascia, is a very, very different feeling probably than normal. So as we do the rest of the class, once in a while, tune back in. Have I lost that open stretch? Have I come up? Have I come in? Come back to that feeling. So these opening exercises, developing the IKE body, are extremely valuable sol solo drills, solo exercises. You can do this anywhere, anytime. You might even be standing in line. You could do a very small version of this, and no one will know. And as you get better at these positions, work with them, you can do them in a much more subtle way. You still get the same stretch, actually. So if we go into Amino um, Kamai, left leg forward, we do some basic footwork. Again, staying open and clear as fast as you can. Here we Sugiyashi is coming offline and turning 45 degrees. So for Irmi Sugiyashi, the front foot comes offline, front foot moves first, and then we turn approximately 45. Some things to watch out for is leaning over when you bring that back foot back, or leaning over at any point. Losing your extension. Often when we move, we tend to tighten in and tighten up, lose our extension. So try to keep that open flowingness throughout. Okay, so we'll do a few following the count. Open the spine, stretch through the arms, right up through the fingers. So front foot comes offline, turn. We hold that for about two seconds to really work on our posture and again, open up the body. We'll do that one more time for practice. Remember the back of the neck. 
Okay, so we'll hold that head position for about two seconds. Each. Knee. Son. So again, this moment here is a chance to hang the tailbone, press the chin in, drop the shoulders, we'll roll the elbows forward. She. Go, release the abdomen. Rope. Teach. Touch. Switch stance. Take a moment, hang out and open. A couple practice ones. Notice if, if, there, if there's any tendency to pull back or pull in. Even as you move, you stay hanging from the string, flowing outwardly. Okay, let's do a few together. Each. Notice how you feel. See if you can correct the feeling. Me. On. She. Go. Release the abdomen. Rope. Teach. Touch. Back to Hadari Hanmi or left leg forward. So that was the Irami Sugiyashi. Irami Aimiyashi is the back foot moving first. So the back foot steps offline. Front foot comes back again, turning 45 degrees. So try a couple on your own, seeing if you're tending to pull up when you step, maybe rock back, try a couple. Work out the bugs. Okay, let's do a few together. Pausing at the end for about two seconds. Mindful pause. Each. Knee. Can you open the spine? Lengthen the spine. Thumb. Can you open the shoulder joints? Go. Go. Siege. Hang out. Breathe into the belly. Touch. Okay. Right side forward. Miki Hanmi. So we'll go right into this here. A few together. Each. Anyone here for a moment? Back to the neck, lower back. Knee. Bump. She. Release the abdomen. Go. Go. Notice if you come up, hang out, bend the knees, teach, touch. Okay, let's do the Kokian build. So I'll move right into it. Again, it's coming from the back foot, sends me forward. Pushing down the front foot, sends me back. We'll open up the shoulder joint, elbow joint, Coming forward, rolling back. Breathe out, going forward, breathe in, coming back. So hang from the string, release the abdomen, use the ground to shift the weight. Now with the turn, Tenkai is a turn, Tenkai is a pivot. Turn on one heel, then the other heel. 
Notice if you're losing your balance, falling back a little bit. Turn on one heel, then the other heel. If you drop your tailbone a little bit, you'll get better balance. Okay. Benucci. Just forward and back for a moment. So again, I don't want to lean forward. I want the largest possible arc. And again, if you think of rolling your elbows forward, <coughs> that'll bring your shoulders down. So everything is relaxed down or weight underside. And then with the tenka, with the turn. Largest possible arc. Your knees are bent because you're hanging out. Tailbone is dropped. It'll naturally make your legs, your knees bent. Continuous extension through the arms and hands. Okay, good. So we'll do Shiho Undo. So Manucci in four directions. Let's start with the right leg forward. And some of you may need to watch the first couple of rotations to get a sense of the four directions. But basically, all we're doing is Manucci. Nucci with a couple turns and a couple steps. So here, turn 180 degrees, and then you step to the right, and then you turn 180 degrees. So that completes the cycle of four. Shiho is four. So we come back to our starting position. Right leg or back leg comes up, step back. So again, right leg's forward. So Manucci here, we do our regular turn. Now we step with the right foot out to the right. Then we do another turn to the left, on the right heel, then the left heel, and that's the fourth Manucci. Then we step up, in other words, Irmi Tenkan, and we're back ready to start again. Let's do a couple more like that. So. One, turn, two, step to the right, three, four. Step up, step back. That's Yermi Tenkan, enter and turn. So that's one, two, step to the right, three, turn to the left, four. So notice if you lost any of that hanging out, maybe you got Arm oriented, upper body oriented. Stay vertical, open up your joints. A couple more. So each, knee, step to the right. Sound, turn to the left. She. Each, knee, step to the right. Rotate to the left. Excellent. Okay, let's do a little bit of Tenkan Mundo. So right leg forward. And if you want to do the footwork a couple times, we're doing a 90 degree turn. So the back foot, left foot steps up, right foot comes back. It's a 90 degree turn for this one. Again, hanging from the string, knees are bent the whole time. Now, what we'll do for this basic one is we'll do the same. A couple classes ago, we talked about different arm trajectories. Often we do a curving shape. For now, just to stay with the basic things that we're doing, let's just do Manucci, straight up and straight down. So all we're doing is a 90 degree turn and basically do Manucci. So right leg forward. When I step up with the left leg, that raises the arms. Stepping back with the right leg draws the arms down. 
I step with my right foot back where it was, that raises the arms, stepping back with the left foot brings it down. So again, exploring the largest possible arc. Knees are bent. Your joints are only getting more and more open. As you hang out, your shoulder joints and your spine are only becoming more and more open. Back the neck is long and open, lower back is flat. Hang out and breathe into the abdomen. Okay, now let's have the left leg forward and we'll do 180 degree turn. So that means the back foot steps up. We land on the ball of the foot and it turns as we land on that foot. The ball of the foot turns as we land on it, bringing the other leg behind. That back leg comes up. As it steps forward, turn on the ball. So 90 degrees, or sorry, 180 degrees. And we'll do the same Minucci arm shape, straight up, straight down, as if cutting a sword. So stepping up raises the arms, stepping back cuts them down. Advancing raises the Minucci, stepping back cuts down. Hang out, knees bent, breathe into the abdomen. See how open you can allow the shoulders to be. Open and extended. Elbows roll forward. Now, just a, a quick thing I'll mention before we move on. And we talked about this last class as well. So we'll just touch upon it and I'll make it more obvious. So something that all of us need to work on. But watch out that you don't come up and down, up and down, up and down. So we want to watch out for that bobbing coming up and down. For most people, when they step, will tend to come up and then down. So we want to stay the same level. And that means keeping the knees bent. Another way to approach that with the terminology that we use is you're hanging out the whole time. So your weight is always sinking. So you always have a deep root. You're always grounded. And your root is always deepening. So you're advancing very stealth-like, very even, straight. So watch out for any little bit of coming up, a little bit of vacuousness there. And you want to stay continually gravity working down through you. Let's try a few like that. Notice the shoulders. Allow the shoulders to sit. Okay, this, uh, this movement could be new for some of you. So I'll demonstrate a few of them. The footwork is exactly the same as what we just did. So we just came from Tenkan Undo, or turning exercise, that happened to be 180 degrees. That's gonna be exactly the same footwork. The arms are gonna be moving a little bit differently, that's all. This is actually a nice forerunner to Taino Henko. It's basically the movement of Taino Henko. But it's a good alignment, opening exercise, timing exercise. Everything's moving together. So if this is new for you, it might take a little while to get the sense of it. We start with the left leg forward and a good basic combi don't come on. Nice and open, settled, but flowing open. Basically, the arms just move with the footwork. So as we advance with the back leg, the right leg, the right hand advances with it. I'm going to turn slightly so that you can see what I'm doing here in front with the arms. As you tank on back, that means your back leg is going to turn around behind you. Left leg is going to go around behind you. As you do that, your front hand 
curves, almost like it's pushing the hip back for that turn. Now, if you stay there, your left leg will be back. Now you advance with your left leg. That means your left hand advances. I'm going to send my back leg behind me, but I'm going to curve this arm as if that hand is going to punch that hip back. Everything moving together. Step, fingers lead, fingers lead, as if pushing that hip back. Hang out and breathe into the abdomen. If you want to start again with me, feel free. Left leg is forward. Right leg advancing, right hand advances. I'm going to send my fingers towards my left hip. That sends my left leg behind me. Now I step forward with my left foot and my left hand goes forward. And I curve my left wrist to push my right foot behind me. So I step, hand and foot go to, together. And then the hand curves back. I do that 10 con foot behind me. Okay. Let's do a little bit of technique work and doing the best we can to bring all this IT work and body opening and alignment into it. So the value of doing a basic technique like white belt quote the gash. It's relatively simple, relatively speaking. So we can then bring as much as, as we can of the things that we just worked on into the movement. So we're not just doing a technique, we're actually training the body, opening the body, and training the mind. So white belt, kosadori, put the gash. So if I face the same direction, forward here, all facing the same way. Let's say Hadari Hanmi, left leg forward. So you imagine your partner, Uke, is grabbing the inside of your left wrist, Kosadori. So my partner, your partner, will be like this. So if I can see everybody's left side forward. Good. So I'm coming in. I'm your Uke. I'm coming in to grab you like this. Okay. We're going to do Irimi Sugiyashi that we did earlier on. Remember this? Yashi. front foot offline, 45 degree turn, keeping our extension and our structure. It's exactly what we're going to do with the invisible uke grabbing inside the wrist. So keeping our extension, keeping our groundedness, Yashi. Now basically we do Manucci, Manucci from there. So your right hand is going to be grabbing their wrist or the base of their thumb. But again, we release that grip by doing Manucci, rolling the elbows forward, which comes from the ground, the back heel, the back foot. So that's the release. So as I do my Manucci, that's the release from the grab. And I grab the base of their thumb. That's also a potential strike, potential attendee. Let's just do that one or two more times. Coming back to the Hanmi, Hiri Sugiyashi, keeping your extension, hips. So this is Minuchi. Coming back once more, offline, Minuchi. Then we place our released hand, our left hand, over their fingers. So our right hand is grabbing the base of their thumb, our fingers are over their fingers because their hand is bent back. Then we do a Tenkan. So as we do a tank on back leg going back, that's our power to do the technique. So let's start from the beginning again. 
offline. Minucci, you're released to the grab and do a potential strike. Fingers over fingers. Ten caught. Now this part may be a little bit tricky, so don't worry about it. We're still here. Your left hand, which was over their fingers, is going to grab the base of their thumb. Just take your left hand and grab palm up. Your right hand releases and goes downward Minucci on their elbow. And then you do Irami Tenkan. Okay. And we'll do that one more time. Irami Sugiyashi, Minucci, Tenkan. Grab with the left hand, right hand goes under their elbow. Irami, Tenkan. Okay. And let's do Migihan, the other side. Hanging out, long spine, open structure. Irimi Sugiyashi, Minucci, to grab, release, and strike. Fingers over fingers. Left leg goes back for a tank on. Let's do that again. So, Irimi Sugiyashi, release. Right fingers over their fingers. Tenkan, right hand goes to their elbow, Irimi Tenkan. One more time. Good extension, Irimi Sugiyashi, Minuchi to release, fingers over fingers, Tenkan back, right hand to the elbow, Irimi Tenkan, sink and pin. Okay, so let's do really quick wind down and we'll finish. Back to this position. Light horse stance, shoulders down and opening, tailbone hanging, so lower back is flat. Push the chin back a little bit so the back of your neck is open and stretched. Breathe into the belly. Then into a hanmi. Try to have the same feeling in the hanmi. Spine stretches long and open and connect that to your arms opening. Breathing in is switching, breathing out, sinking and opening. Breathing in is switching, breathing out is sinking and stretching. So on your own time, Open, open and release, sink and stretch, sink and stretch. Excellent. Okay. So light horse dance, stretch, just picking up that side foot for just a moment, stretch through the entire body. Nice, good breathing the whole way. So. Notice if you're tending to hold your breath or tighten your breath. Really continuous, big breathing. Stretching through your entire body. Okay, then the more elaborate version. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Pulling this up. The hand close to you rotates vertically, then to the corner, and then down into your stance. Swing it over to the other side. Stretching long arms or stretching your torso. Stretching out through the hands and fingers. Then the hand that's closer to you rotates vertically up, straight up, and then to the corner. Stretch through your entire body, sideways and vertically. A couple more. Stretch pulls you. Open. Through the whole body. Hang out and breathe, stretch. Vertical rotation. Cross, open the back. 
open the shoulders, stretch out through the arms, cross the chest through the arms, cross the other way, open the back, open, press and stretch through the arms, through the sternum and chest. Stretch the back, shoulders, arms and chest, once more. Good, bring the feet closer together, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. A little bit of a rise here, a little bit of a sink. Breathing in on the rise, breathe out on the sink using your legs. Rotate your arms here. So here your palms up, rotate your palms outward. Scooping with the palms, palms are inward, rotating the palms outward. So getting some good rotation in the shoulders still. Palms towards you, upward and away from you. Palms towards you, upward and away from you. Okay, one more. Then bring your hands to your hana. Hang out, weight through the feet, shoulders down, open the spine long, lower back is virtually flat, back the neck, virtually flat, and get a little stretch in there without doing any of the shape. Have the same feeling stretch in your body, throughout your body. Stretch across the chest, stretch up and down through the spine, opening the shoulders, allowing your weight to exit through the legs and feet. And the more you let that weight exit through your legs and feet, the more it opens and stretches your body. Connect that downwardness, connect gravity to an opening stretching. Release the abdomen. Breathe in, expansion, breathe out, back to the center. Breathe in, expand outwardly from the center, breathe out, back to the center. Just your mind and breath doing the work. Your body is just softly following the direction of your mind and breath. And back to the hara, your center, your core, Weight through the feet. Focus your mind deep into your core. Right where your hands are, but deep in the core of the body. Feel the vibration in your body and around your body. Feel the warmth 